Okay, so this is just a little continuation. I forgot to mention a few things. I watched a bit more of the video. Uh, <coughs> um, number one is, you know, just by showing your books, I'm going to show my books too over there. My Tafsirs, my Sira, Dictionary of the Sira, my Qurans. Anyway, there's no point of that. Just because you have some books, you know. Um, I'm willing to discuss uh, the issues that you you you're raising. Um, if you can reference and quote, please. Um, not just to the debate, but you know, in in general, um, I do refer uh, viewers to uh, this book. It's called the Quran and Orientalist. It's uh, by Sheikh Muhammad Mahar Ali, and you can find this most likely on Amazon or so. Uh, this will discuss all the issue of Ibn Masood or the variances, supposedly they're called variances. Um, not actually, they're different readings or pronunciations or synonyms and words used, which are under the term Qiraat and Ahruf. And then um, um, the history of the Quranic text from revelation to compilation. Uh, it's a comparative study with the Old and New Testament, but I mean. Forget about all the New Testament. It's going to be about the Quran here. This is uh, Muhammad Al Azami. Okay, you can find this most likely on Amazon or Google. And <coughs> and here, it will, you know, it'll kind of show whether Doctor Oakley is you know correct or not. But let me just go back to Ibn Masud. Why in his Quran, for example, his Codex of Ibn Masud, as they say, um, does it have a few? It had a few lesser surahs, different organization. Number one, I said he he's the one who wrote it. The companions, Prophet Sallallahu he arranged the Qur'an finally, the final revelation, the final rearrangement of the Qur'an came only uh, the last Ramadan before he died, right? Because that's when the angel Gabriel would come down. So that's why there was no yet compiled Qur'an. Some people are like, why didn't they compile the Qur'an? The Qur'an is written. <clears throat> the actual order was not yet fully established. And of course, that's why Ibn Masood's order was not the same. Uh, number two, um, he had a few lesser surahs. He had some duas in there, like the kunud dua, right? Some people say, oh, look, there's an extra surah. No, it's a dua kunud. Allahumma ahdina fi man ahdayn, right? That's that's what we recite in the witter prayer, the last, which is the one raka or the one unit of prayer before we go to sleep, right? So he would write it himself there. That was not part of the Quran. He knew it. That's why Uthman was asking for his Quran, right? So there's no doubt or any kind of how would I say, uh, people come later on and say, oh look, even Masood has different things in it, right? He wanted to make sure that there's no such thing. He eliminated all the doubts. You know, He had in mind that, hey, this can happen. That's why he, for example, he burned all those Qurans. And you know, there's there's no shame, you know, this is throughout the history, throughout everything in the Quran that Uthman burned all the bones and the letters and the skins that the Quran was written on. Um, especially, he wanted to make sure, as the, as the Prophet Sallallahu was saying to the people, make sure you write for me on the Qur'an. For many, many Sahabas and companions uh, reported in the, in the Hadith that he did not allow them to write other than the Qur'an, right? Except for some, okay, like Zayd and some other, which he knew that, and, and uh, Ibn Masood, that he knew that their memory is good, he knew that they will not mix him and so on and so forth. But when, Abu, uh, when uh, Uthman was asking for he knew that, hey, you know, in his mind, he knew that some people might come and say, look, this is different. So he wanted to eradicate any kind of doubts. Okay, so that's one of the things. Um, he did not have, for example, Surah Nas and, and uh, Surah Kul uh, Rabil Falak, right? Because these were very simple for him. Uh, he did not put him in there. These were something that he was reciting throughout. Uh, he, it was, his Quran was not exhaustive. Okay, it was just whatever he put together uh, from his writing, whatever he heard the Prophet Of course, he, he memorized the Quran whatever to that point many other companions memorized the Quran they all knew it right the so the point is that he did not hesitate to give up his Quran because of you know he thought that his Quran is the true and everyone else is wrong no because it was a dear possession to him it was his possession what he worked to he had his hadith his notes that he made his prayers and duas that's one thing that Uthman knew that Ibn Masu wrote his own words and duas or supplications that he heard from the Prophet or he or the Prophet would explain for example some verse and Ibn Masud would write it in the verse now of course the the uh, language of the Quran is much different uh, even when you compare for example with the hadith right if could you mix the hadith in the Quran and think it's the same text no if you read Qala Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Inna Ma'ala Ba'ru Bin Niya, right? For example, one of the hadith, um, 
and if you you know if you want to mix it with a verse from the Quran, you find that the structure, the grammatical structure is different. They don't fit. They don't have the same poetic style. They don't have the same uh, structure. So that's something that you could never never mix uh, together. That's the, one of the mujiz again of the Quran. So that's you know for for Ibn Masud. Um, of course, there's the codex for Aisha, for example, if you want to go and talk more uh, about other things. Um, so now, you know, I'm ready to go. In, Ibn Kathir, if you want, um, you know, you want to discuss Hadith Bukhari, Muslim, anything like that. It's, it's uh, you know, the Muslims are not hiding it. It's in our books. You said that old scholars were easy, they talked about it, but today, you know, new scholars or new people, Muslims, they, they, they've made the Quran, you know, pretty much firm or that's not true. It's been always. It's in all our books. We study our books of old. That's that's you know the closest to the prophet it gets. The best it is. You know the best the authentic the source it is in the knowledge. Right. The the issue is that maybe the people that you're you know discussing. Now, this is not Sheikh Jalal because Sheikh Jalal, if you look at his points, he easily can can easily discuss these issues. And you know I, again I put people to go to Islam Life. Uh, you know to to check that uh, Google Islam Life. Um, but. You know, people. That's what we study. That's what we know. That the the kiraat and the ahruf. This is something that I mean. Think about it. How come they're still there? How come we still memorize the the uh, the kiraat, for example? You know, the different ten different readings and pronunciation. How come it's still there? So you know, it's it's not that people have not worked at preserving it. Preserved it. If you look and analyze them, right? If you go, there's there's an article by Sir William Muir which actually puts text by text next to each other and compares what are the differences, right? And easily uh, you'll see. I um, kind of put, you know, refer people. If you go to my Jibril K account, to my some of my early videos, uh, there's some videos on in the infallible Quran, and I show some examples of the differences and what these karat and ahruf mean. Okay, so you can uh, go and check it out. So. Um, you know, I think Dr. Oakley is, you know, I think is 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 a decent guy. Number one, because he does not insult, and I really, uh, you know, I, I really commend that. And I think that's he has a great character in terms of that. Um, you know, his scholarship uh, in terms of Islam. Of course, I don't want to attack his, you know, his credibility. I think you know he has the books and so on and so forth. So um, you know. You know, I'm. You know, it's just you know the burden of proof and how he you know approaches things. Uh, this is something that you know can be discussed. But you know, I really like it. I you know I, I would enjoy discussing with him because he doesn't insult and say, oh, he's, this is so far I've never seen such. You know, there was some attempts to kind of you know put down Islam based on some things um, in in the debates. But you know, that's something else we can talk about. You know, I never heard him swear or say you know rape or anyway. You know some of the other foolish things that we hear on the internet. I apologize if I upset anyone or if I was. A bit, I'm trying to kind of you know this 10 minute limit is is killing me. And I'm trying to uh, to get you know the points cover. If I haven't done it, then you know forgive me. Uh, you know mention it and I'll try to uh, cover it maybe in another video. Assalamu alaikum.